Hello, I'm Cathy Kay in Washington. Christian Fraser is off. Clive Meyer is in London for us. A judge in Washington sounded ready to sentence President Trump's former national security adviser to prison, but at the last minute agreed to postpone that sentencing because General Michael Flynn is still cooperating with special counsel Robert Mueller's Russia investigation. At one point, the judge said Mr. Flynn's actions bordered on treason. Well, here's a reminder of how the former Army Lieutenant General got into this mess. In February 2016, he joined the Trump presidential campaign as an advisor on national security issues. And after Trump's election victory, he was named national security advisor. But just three months later, Mr. Flynn resigned after it transpired he lied about discussing sanctions with the Russian ambassador to Washington. In December of 2017, Mr. Flynn pleaded guilty to lying to the FBI and entered into a deal to cooperate with special counsel Robert Mueller. Fast forward a year and today, Mr. Trump's former national security adviser appears in court for his sentencing hearing which the judge then agrees to delay. For more on today's drama, we can speak to Elizabeth Wider. She's president of the Constitutional Accountability Center and A.B. Stoddart, she's associate editor of Real Clear Politics. Thanks all of you for joining us here um, on the program. Let's start with you, Elizabeth. What does this mean for Donald Trump, that Mr. Flynn looked like he might be on the point of going to prison and has now been given another three months to carry on cooperating with the special counsel uh, and talking about anything he might know about Mr. Trump? Well, it's certainly not good news for President Trump if he has anything to hide, because what this means is that the special counsel and this judge in particular, Judge Sullivan, are not messing around when it comes to these claims. We saw Michael Flynn try to have it essentially both ways by pleading guilty and seeking to get the benefits of cooperation. And it does appear that he has cooperated extensively. But then coming out with this bizarre conspiracy theory from uh, recently, which we've also seen come from the White House, that somehow Flynn was entrapped by the FBI into lying. And the judge made very clear today that he was not having that nonsense, that he, he wanted Flynn to make clear in court today that he was guilty of lying about his contacts with Kislyak, the Russian, then Russian ambassador, and that he was expected to continue to cooperate fully. And so this is getting, you know, literally down the hall from the Oval Office when you have a national security advisor lying about Russian contacts on key issues of foreign policy and being uh, sentenced eventually to um, maybe probation, maybe time in prison, but being convicted of those serious crimes. Maybe any moment now, uh, Sarah Sanders at the White House is due to start a press briefing. We'll be listening into that to see whether uh, what she says about this. But one of the things Mr. Trump has uh, been tweeting about Michael Flynn, he said good luck to him in court. He seemed to imply that he had been, putting, been put under a huge amount of pressure to cooperate. And of course, Mr. Trump has called this all along a witch hunt, this investigation. It didn't sound like the judge in this case agreed with the president that there was anything witch hunty about this. No, indeed, uh, Judge Sullivan asked um, uh, Lieutenant General Flynn directly in court today whether or not he had been entrapped in the process. And he said, no, I was not. He not only acknowledged that lying, that he knew that lying was a crime, um, but that he had not been, that the FBI agents who queried him had not done anything wrong and he had not been entrapped. So the whole sort of narrative coming out of the White House and Sarah Sanders had actually repeated this line just hours before the sentencing that the, the, the Flynn was forced into all of this has really fallen apart. Uh, I think they were thinking, um, some associates of President Trump and Flynn, that the, that the judge in this case was going to go after some potential wrongdoing by the FBI, but in, instead it was the opposite. He came down very harshly on him uh, and Flynn was quite contrite. Elizabeth, if I could turn to you, um, the comments from this judge in court, I don't think I've heard, heard anything like it. I mean, he he turned to uh, a flag in the corner of the courtroom and he said, arguably, what you've done, pointing to Flynn, undermines everything this flag here stands for. Arguably, you sold your country out. Have you heard anything like that from a federal judge? Well, you know, Judge Sullivan, and I've appeared before him as a lawyer in court, he takes his role as someone who is there to impart, um, you know, clear justice seriously. And he wanted to make sure that people, the American public, I think in particular, knew that 
this was an extremely serious offense that we were talking about here. Even if, as recommended by the special counsel, Michael Flynn does not get any time in prison because of his cooperation, we're talking about potentially selling your country out, lying in the White House to the FBI about contacts with uh, a Russian official about key foreign policy issues and that this is serious and that the law is something that, you know, we see these tweets from the president and witch hunt and all of that, but no, this is a serious matter. And the judge, um, you know, I think Judge Sullivan is no nonsense. He's no nonsense when it comes to prosecutors and defendants. And we saw that today with Michael Flynn and Michael Flynn eventually he and his lawyers gave up their, you know, kind of theater that maybe they're doing to try to keep in the good graces of Donald Trump. But they eventually said, yeah, the FBI did not entrap us. We're guilty. We're going to cooperate. OK, Elizabeth and Avi, stay with us, because as Mr. Flynn was awaiting sentencing, there were more legal problems for Mr. Trump today. He was forced to shut down his charity because of a lawsuit against it. Yeah, the uh, New York Attorney General Barbara Underwood was scathing in her assessment of the charity's role. She wrote, our petition detailed a shocking pattern of illegality involving the Trump Foundation, including unlawful coordination with the Trump presidential campaign, repeated and willful self-dealing, and much more. This amounted to the Trump Foundation functioning as little more than a checkbook to serve Mr. Trump's business and political interests. AB, um, another hammer blow, I suppose, in terms of judicial rhetoric for the president and all these arguments, the chaff some people have suggested that the White House has been putting out about these various investigations, that they're witch hunts, that they're partisan, um, that they're unfounded. Um, is any of that now um, losing attraction as far as the public are concerned because of these comments from judges and because of all the indictments that have been handed down? Right, it was a very interesting question because a new poll came out this week that showed 62% of the country, an NBC poll, believes that Trump has been dishonest when he talks about the Russia investigation. That includes some of his own supporters, if you're getting to 62% of the country. And so uh, I think his increasingly desperate sounding and factually wrong tweeting about this is not really helping his case. It's obviously horrifying uh, his legal team, but it's not really helping on the PR front. Republicans have decided, while they are increasingly concerned about what this could mean, these kinds of descriptions in the court documents and like the New York Attorney General's description today about self-dealing makes them nervous that perhaps uh, the Mueller investigation or the Southern District of New York investigation is going to turn up Russia related or just standalone financial crimes uh, from the president and his family. Uh, they are dealing with and providing immunity for uh, the CFO of the Trump Organization, Alan Weisselberg. There are, and as in addition to the cooperation of Michael Cohen, but Republicans have made a decision that they are going to stay silent until the conclusion of the Mueller report, which makes days like today rather difficult. So, Elizabeth, what's the legal jeopardy in any of this, if at all? for the president himself. This is his personal charity. It's now been forced to close down. At one point, um, Melania Trump spent $20,000 from the charity's own money on buying a six-foot-tall portrait of Donald Trump uh, during a gala at Mar-a-Lago. Mar we can see the picture of it there. She also spent $10,000. Mr. Trump himself spent $10,000 on a four-foot painting of himself. All of this from charitable money. It doesn't look very good. It might not be very nice. But is there legal jeopardy in any of this for the president? Yes, and it's important to note that while this uh, particular, uh, these particular allegations are civil in nature, they're not criminal, so it won't involve uh, potentially in this, in this suit uh, someone going to jail from the Trump Foundation. The real danger here that I'm sure has Trump world shaking is the prospect of civil discovery, which allows uh, litigants to get information, to get documents, to get all of these financial details that Trump is trying to hide. And the worry from the, those in the Trump circle is that it could turn up other evidence of misdeeds. And I, this is just another thread in the web of criminality and corruption surrounding Donald Trump. And it's hard to see how he himself at some point doesn't get stuck in it.
Okay, Elizabeth Widra and uh, A.B. Stoddard. Thanks very much indeed for joining us. Thank you.